Okay, I'm going to begin section 12.2, uh, which is logarithmic functions. And this will probably take a couple of videos, but uh, um, so we, we just got done talking about exponential functions in 12.1. Uh, an exponential function is a function of the form y equal a to the x. Uh, a is the base, a has to be some positive number, but a can't be 1. Okay, now uh, an exponential function is a 1 to 1 function. And so remember what that means, it has an inverse function. And uh, we define, you know, when we calculate an inverse, uh, it's all about switching x and y. So if I wanted to calculate the inverse of y equal a to the x, I just switch x and y and I get x equal a to the y. Now this inverse function, x equal a to the y, is so important in math that we give it a special name, we call it the logarithmic function. Okay, and here's a more of a formal definition. Uh, the logarithmic function to the base a, where a is positive and a can't be 1, uh, is denoted by y equals log base a of x, is how we'd read that. And it is defined by y equals log base a of x if and only if uh, this equation here happens, x equals a to the y. Um, one of the things that I usually tell my algebra students at this point is to make sure that you know this definition. Okay, so many things that we do with logarithms revolve around this one statement here that is the definition of a logarithm. If you don't have the definition of a logarithm known, that's going to be a real problem, I think, for doing lots of things with logarithms. Uh, so uh, be sure that you know that here. Okay, now the uh, a couple of other things. Uh, the phrase if and only if that you see here is a phrase that we sometimes see in various math classes. Um, and uh, basically what it means is that you have two if-then statements. Okay, so one way that I could read this is beginning to end, like how I would normally read it. I could say if y equal a, uh, log base a of x, then x equal a to the y. Um, also, I could read it end to beginning. Okay, I could say if x equal a to the y, then y equal log base a of x. Okay, so you see what I'm doing there? I'm, I'm reading it uh, beginning to end and end to beginning. Both are true. Okay, and that's what we mean by the phrase if and only if. Um, the logarithmic function is a function. Okay, so like any other function, uh, there's input values and output values. Uh, X is the input. Y is the output. Okay, A is the base. Um, now, we'll have to be... Um, using the definition quite a bit and so I, I mentioned that you know you're going to want to know that. Um, here's uh, some statements where I'm you know using the definition here. So uh, the logarithmic statement 4 equals log base 3 of x of, uh, of 81 excuse me 4 equals log base 3 of 81 uh, that is equivalent to the statement 81 equals 3 to the fourth. Okay like in this problem here y is 4 x is 81 and a is 3. So if I rewrite that equation into this form, x equal a to the y, um, x is uh, 81, like I said, um, a is 3, and y is 4. Okay, now 3 to the 4th equal 81, that, that's true, right? If you take 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, you get 81. Uh, it's just, okay, this statement here, 3, three to the 4th equal 81, uh, 4 equals log base 3 of 81 means exactly the same thing. Okay, it's just a notational deal. You know, over here I'm writing it in the exponential form, which is what we're more familiar with. And here's the equivalent logarithmic form. Both mean the same thing, though. Okay. Um, here's another one. If we had the, uh, the statement negative 1 equal log base 5 of 1 fifth, uh, well, what does that look like in exponential form? So x is one-fifth, that's going to be all alone on uh, the uh, one side of the equation. Um, 5 is the base, so that 5 is my a value, and then negative 1 is the y value, so negative 1 would be the power of 5. Um, 5 to the negative first power equals one-fifth. Yeah, that's true, that's one of my laws of exponents, right? 5 to the negative 1, that's the same as 1 over 5 to the first, or one-fifth. 
Okay, and here's here's what the logarithmic form would would look like. Uh, again, both mean the same thing. It's just you know how you're writing it. Um, now, what if we want to go from exponential form to logarithmic form? Okay, what if we had the equation two cubed equals eight? Well, that's written in exponential form. Okay, what does that look like in logarithmic form? Well, um, x is eight, so that's going to be the input into the logarithm. Two is the base, so it's going to be the base of the logarithm, and three is the y value, the power of two, that's going to be uh, all alone on the other side of the uh, equation here. So three equals log base two of eight would be this equation, but now rewritten into the logarithmic form. Okay. Um, so the definition can be used to convert from exponential form to logarithmic form and vice versa as these examples show. And we're going to be using that a lot, you know, we're going to write something in logarithmic form and uh, write it in exponential form. So again, this definition, got to know that. Uh, there's also a note here, the domain of just a basic logarithm, y equal log base a of x, is all positive numbers. Okay, so you can't take log of zero, you can't take log of a negative. Okay, we can only have a positive overall input value. Um, now, careful with that. That does not mean that you can't have a negative coming out of the calculation. That will sometimes happen. Negative one here that I'm pointing to is the y value, not the x value, right? And of course, there's a difference between x and y, all right? So, um, the range is all real numbers, okay? So, uh, again, you can have a negative coming out or you could have zero coming out of the calculation. You can't, you, you just can't take log of a negative or log of zero, okay? Um, let's try uh, problem seven. Okay, and I want us to get some, some more practice here using this definition. Uh, we're going to rewrite each exponential equation into the logarithmic form. Okay, part A, 5 to the 4th equals 625. What does that look like in logarithmic form? Well, all we're doing is we're identifying, okay, uh, what, what is x, what is a, what is y, and we're going to rewrite that form into this other form. So in this uh, problem here, it looks like x is 625, so that's going to be the input into the logarithm. 5 is the base of the exponential, so that's going to be the base of the logarithm. 4 is the y value, okay, so that's going to be on the other side of the logarithmic equation there. And so I just uh, fill in the numbers in the appropriate spots there. Um, 4 equals log base 5 of 625, that would be this equation but now rewritten into the logarithmic form. Okay, here's another one. 4 to the negative second equals 1 16th. What does that look like in logarithmic form? Well, um, x is 1 16th, so that's going to go inside the logarithm. y is negative 2. The base is 4, so that's going to be the 4 is going to be the base of the logarithm now. Uh, negative 2 equals log base 4 of 1 16th. That would be the uh, the equivalent logarithmic form. And again, just an observation here, notice how we can have a negative coming out of the calculation, just not going into the calculation, right? Like 1 16th is a positive number. 625, that's a positive number. 1 5th, that's a positive number, right? 81, these are all positive numbers going inside the logarithm. Uh, part C, 3 to the x equals 17. Okay, well, uh, the x is the power, right? So that's going to be all alone. On the, uh, on the logarithmic form, and uh, so I'm going to say x equal log base is base 3, and then uh, 17 is, uh, is going to go inside the logarithm, okay? Uh, let's go the other way. What if we, in problem 8, what if we have a, a logarithmic equation and we want to rewrite that into the exponential form? Well, same deal. So, you know, right now I'm in the form y equal log base a of x, and so I just need to identify, okay, what is x, what is y, what is a, and I'll rewrite it into this other form here, x equal a to the y. Uh, so let's see, for this one, x is 36, um, the base is 6, that's my a value, y is 2, okay, and so uh, x equal a to the y, that means that uh, 36 would be equal to 6 squared. 
6 squared equal 36, that's a true statement, right? Uh, well, okay, uh, 2 equal log base 6 of 36, that means exactly the same thing. Okay, it's just how you're writing it. Uh, here's another one, part B, negative 3 equal log base e of x. So x is the input, right? That's going to be all alone now on the exponential form. Uh, e is the base, and of course we're talking about the number e. And uh, negative 3 is the y value, okay? Uh, x equal e to the negative se uh, third power, that's uh, now my equation but rewritten into an exponential form. Okay, and uh, here's another one. Log base 49 of 7 equal 1 half. Uh, x is 7, the base is 49, y is 1 half. 49 to the 1 half power equals 7. Yeah, that's a true statement, right? 49 to the 1 half, that's, uh, th that also means the square root of 49, if I were to use a radical notation, right? The square root of 49 is 7, that is true. Now, of course, one thing that I want you to notice here is that when you rewrite the form into another form, obviously check and see that the result is true, right? If I, if it, you know, it, if a person were to write like uh, 36 squared equals 6, well, that's not true. We, we, we already know that when we square 36, we don't get 6, okay? Um, so, of course, all these have to be true, you know, um, when, you, when you write it into the other form. Okay, now, um, there's some problems in the book where they want you to do some calculations with uh, logarithms, uh, specifically finding values of logarithms. And uh, uh, many of the problems that we do uh, with logarithms involve no calculator. Okay, I'll comment on that um, more. Um, but uh, most calculators, uh, they, they, they have a log button. Uh, they, all, they also have a, an, an LN button, which I'll talk about uh, uh, later on. But uh, uh, they, you can't do like special bases. Okay, like, like you're not going to find a log base 2 button or a log base 3 button or a log base 5 button. Okay. Uh, that's all right. You know, we, we, we actually don't need a calculator for any of these problems here um, at the moment. Okay. Um, but uh, so one way that you can find values of logarithms is you can apply the definition here. Okay. So I mentioned, uh, you know, the definition to me is probably the most important thing to know when it comes, with, uh, it comes to logarithms. You got to know the definition. Okay. Because we're going to be using that all over the place uh, for, for various things here. And uh, I'll be using that here in these problems, okay? Uh, so let's look, take, take a look at part A. I want to find the exact value of log base 2 of 16. Well, I'm going to call that y, and uh, I need to know the actual number for y, right? Since y represents this logarithm. Once we find y, we're, we're done. Okay, well, I have a, an equation form, a, a logarithmic equation, y equal log base 2 of 16. And let me apply the definition and rewrite that into the uh, exponential form, okay? Uh, x equal a to the y. So, uh, let's see, 16 is my x value. 2 is the base. y would be the power of 2. And uh, I'm looking at 2 to the y equals 16. Okay, so now I'm in exponential form. And we were solving some exponential equations in the last section. Um, remember, the strategy is to try to get the same base on both sides. Well, I can do that here. I, I can get base 2 on both sides. I just got to think 2 to what power gives me 16? Well, 2 to the 4th gives me 16. So where I see 16, I'm going to rewrite that as 2 to the 4th. Um, now I can remove the base, 2, and set the power as equal. y is equal to 4. Okay, so log base 2 is 16. That's equal to 4. The other three are going to be very similar here. Uh, so suppose that we wanted to find the exact value of log base 3 of 1 over 27. Well, I'm going to call that y and then apply the definition to rewrite this into an exponential form. Uh, 1 over 27, that's my x value. 3 is the base. y would be the power of 3. And so I'm looking at 1 one twenty seventh equals 3 to the y. And I'm going to solve for y, so I want to uh, try to get base 3 on both sides. I can do that. 3 to the negative third power, that would be the same as 1 over 3 cubed, or 1 over 27. 
So where I see the 1 over 27, I'm going to rewrite that with 3 to the negative third power. That way I've got base 3 on both sides. I can remove the 3's and set the powers equal. Y equal negative 3 would be the answer. Okay, so log base 3 of 1 over 27, yeah, that's equal to negative 3. Uh, again, note the negative that can come out of the calculation. Okay, part C. Suppose we want to find log base 5 of 1. Well, I'm going to call that y and then apply the definition. 1 is the x value, 5 is the base, y would be the power of 5, right? So 5 to the y equal 1. Solve for y. Uh, well, anything to the 0 power is 1, right? So 5 to the 0 would be 1. And I'd, I'd want to try to get base 5 on both sides here. And now that I've got that, I can remove the 5s and set the powers equal. y is 0. Okay, so log base 5 of 1, that's 0. Okay, and actually, log base anything of 1 is always going to be 0. Okay, log base 5 of 1 is 0. Log base 3 of 1 is 0. Log base 8 of 1 is 0. Log base anything of 1 is always 0 because the calculation would be the same. Okay, anything to the 0 power is 1. Um, part D, we want to find log of 100. Okay, I'll call that y. Now you'll notice here there is no base. Whenever there's no base indicated, it's understood to be base 10. You can write the base 10 if you want or not, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, still know that it's base 10 though. Okay, now it, it kind of reminds me of like uh, working with radicals. You know how sometimes when we work with radicals, uh, there's uh, you know a number in the upper left hand corner and sometimes not. Okay, that, that number is the index, of course. Uh, when there's no index, it's actually uh, understood to be an index of 2. Okay, but with a square root, like we never write an index of 2. We could, though. That, I mean, there wouldn't be a problem with that. It, it'd look kind of silly. It's just, you know, we're, we're not really used to it. Okay, but a, a, a square root has an index of 2. Um, whenever there's no base on a logarithm, it's understood to be base 10. Okay, so um, having said that, uh, I have y equal log base 10 of 100, and I'm going to rewrite that into an exponential form. Um, 100 is the x value, 10 is the base, y would be the power of 10, and so now I'm in exponential form, I'm solving for y. 10 squared is 100, right, so now I've got base 10 on both sides, I can remove the 10s and set the power equal, y is 2. Log of 100? Yeah, it's equal to 2. Okay, now, um, I mentioned that uh, a lot of calculators have a log button on it, okay? I'd be kind of surprised if yours doesn't have it. Um, and uh, so, like on the uh, uh, the graphing calculator here, uh, here here's the log button. Oops. Um, gonna turn it on. Um, so, if I type in, like, log of 100, I get 2. Okay, so that yeah, this this problem could have been done on uh, on my my calculator here with with, with no problem. Uh, here's the uh, TI thirty that I've I've been using on occasion also. Uh, so like if I type like here's the log button log of one hundred is uh, is two. Okay, now I I see a log button. I don't see a log base two button or a log base three button or a log base five button. Right? I don't see that on this calculator either. Okay, um, so m many calculators um, are set up to where they, with logarithmic calculations, you can do base 10 or base E, but you can't do these other special bases. Okay, I mean, some, some are capable of doing that, but most of them aren't. Even, even the high-tech ones, it's, you, you can't just enter in the base, okay, which I kind of like because it, it, it forces you to to know the definition, you know, and to be able to calculate directly. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll stop the, the video right here.